As you heard from Umala and Robert, um, you know, each in their own way has done incredible service to their communities and, and, and to the country. Um, I also want to extend a, a very special thanks to tonight's dinner co-chairs, Jeff Hawkins and Meredith DeWitt. They are two incredible friends of mine who were so taken with this mission um, that they threw themselves into making tonight a very, very special night, not just for me, but for the ADL. Um, and amazingly, a real symbolic testament that neither of them are Jewish. And they threw themselves into making this an incredibly special night because they recognize that this, Imagine a world without hate. It's not a Jewish concept. It's not a Christian concept. It's not a Muslim concept. It's a human concept. And I cannot thank you enough. It, it has also been terrific working with board chair Jeff Robbins and, and getting to, to know him better and, and regional director Derek Shulman. Um, Along the way, I learned um, the answer to one of the important Boston sports questions that um, when Bill Belichick does ultimately retire one day, Derek Shulman should have the job because um, he terrified Robert <laughs> and uh, he really does have people fired up and focused on the mission and it's been a pleasure, pleasure working with him. And you know, I am, I am particularly overwhelmed by the support and generosity of a number of people around the room, and in particular, these tables in front and the tables surrounding me. You know, all of my friends, and I especially want to thank my partners at Bain Capital and Sankey Advisors, who have collectively contributed to this event, not just with their money, but with their spirit, as they have to hundreds of organizations throughout the Commonwealth, throughout the country, and throughout the world. Josh Beckenstein, one of my partners at Bain Capital, recently summed up our culture incredibly well when he commented in an interview that if you believe philanthropy is about giving money away, you have it wrong. It's about giving back. That is the culture that guides our firm. That's the culture that my parents instilled in me, the culmination of which brings us here tonight. I thank you all. Anytime you receive a Lifetime Achievement Award, um, it's a good day, especially when at 46 everybody's telling me how young I am. But to receive one from a civil rights organization is humbling and, and you've probably noticed a bit overwhelming. Yet I do feel guilty because I stand here tonight because of my support and Jeannie's support for the great work of others. For the people you saw in that amazing video, Michael Brown, Alan Casey, Mark Edwards, Jonah Edelman, Dr. Mike Van Royen, Barry Schrag, who spoke earlier, Abe Foxman, my own rabbi, the truly great Howard Jaffe, and so many others. They are the people that change people's lives every day. They watch out for everyone in need of a helping hand. The Anti-Defamation League has played such an important role in American history and Jewish history. It embodies the ideals of community and equality that are at the core of America's founding and the overriding philosophy of tikkun olam, repairing the world that is fundamental to the Jewish faith. So what is defamation? The concept goes all the way back to the Greek democracy. When you study the history of defamation, one is struck by how hard it has been to define over the years. Generally, it has been described as maligning, disparaging, vilifying, or denigrating an individual. The US legal system has struggled with this concept since our founding. For me, I think the Roman emperors had it right in saying that defamation is specially applied to anonymous accusation, the dissemination of which is particularly dangerous, whether the matter contained in them were true or false. The Romans saw that there was an act of cowardice in defaming. There have been a few times in my life when I have experienced defamation. In my high school, a place where there was a small but visible Jewish contingent, my brother and I encountered some classic anti-Semitism, as some kids thought it was funny to greet us one day by flipping pennies at us and calling us Eastside Kikes. 
The east side was the neighborhood we lived in. Early in my career, I was involved in a transaction with a management team thought it was novel, shall we say, to be dealing with a Jewish guy. At various points in the negotiation, I was referred to as a money lender, a Shylock, and throughout I heard from time to time about my type. And more recently, during the last year, I experienced defamation because I'm a proud Democrat at Bain Capital. The The reality, the reality is my firm is full of great Democrats, great Republicans, and engaged citizens of all types. But I became fodder for bloggers, media, and what we'll call a certain segment of talk radio. I found the impact on me did not matter to them, the impact on my family did not matter to them, and certainly the truth did not matter to them. When you experience defamation, you are struck by several things. Inevitably, you are surprised by who is attacking you. Normal people don't behave that way. You really appreciate who is there to defend you. But most of all, you are shocked by the bystanders who do nothing. People who see the wrong happen, but don't want to pick sides or make waves. In many ways, that's the worst transgression of all. In my high school, the only Jewish player on the football team stepped in and did what our people have done for generations and watched out for another Jew in need. That did not surprise me. What I remember more, 30 years later, is the action of another student, a three-sport star, a son of a police officer. He was, from a neighbor, he was from the neighborhood of the kids who were mocking us. He stood up and saw this happen, walked over and said, you have to stop. This is not right. Dozens of students watched this happen over several days, yet only two spoke up. On the business deal, which did not have any other senior people from my firm on it, not a single person was able to step up or chose to step up, not on my side, not on the other side. Interestingly, as I looked back on it, I think most of them did not even realize that calling a Jew a moneylender or a Shylock was actually offensive. They just saw it as a joke. And in the political realm, most people chalked it up to politics, which in some way seemed to make it okay for them. What I have experienced is nothing compared to what goes on every day to millions of people across our country, to people who are attacked because of the God they worship, the color of their skin, the country they came from, or who they love. If there is one theme that ties together the organizations that Jeannie and I support is that they are all run by upstanders, people who do not stand idly by and watch people in need ignore people without a voice, or run away from people under attack. We support people and organizations that are about action. For those who believe economic circumstances should not be determined by the zip code of your birth, Mark Edwards and Opportunity Nation are there. For those kids in overcrowded and underperforming schools who need help to stay in school and on track, Michael Brown and City Year are there. For for parents and teachers fighting to change our public schools to overcome the greatest civil rights issue of this century, equal access to quality education, Jonah Edelman and Stanford Children are there. For inner city high school kids who think that college is too expensive and thus unattainable for them, Bob Giannino, Racine, and you Aspire are there. For a voice in creating a culture of upstanding across the country, Alan Casey and Be the Change are there. And for those who are attacked because they are Jewish or for who they love or for the color of their skin, the Anti-Defamation League, the ultimate upstander, is there. It is a real statement that the ADL in its mission statement acknowledges that their goal is more than just to protect the Jewish people. As Dr. King reminded us, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And when you fight for the equitable treatment of people everywhere and are willing to put yourself out there 24 hours a day, seven days a week for 100 years, there is bound to be controversy. While its charter is clear, its mission great, the nature of ADL's work is sometimes controversial. 
And yes, at times over the last hundred years, the execution has not been perfect. And when they are not perfect, or from time to time even blow it, it is very public. As I have become more involved and supportive of the ADL's work, I have seen up close the totality of the good and come to understand the good intentions behind the few difficult times. I can tell you that when you think about the ADL, the greater arc of their work has protected the Jewish people, made America greater, and the world safer for those in need of a voice. The ADL today is a leader in the coalition that created the most comprehensive anti-bullying laws in the country. The ADL is the number one NGO that trains law enforcement about hate crimes. And the ADL is a uniquely Jewish organization, fully committed to building bridges of understanding, not just within a community, but among communities. That commitment is evident today in ADL's thriving Latino Jewish Roundtable Discussion Group and its interfaith youth leadership program known as Camp If. It is, it is fitting that the theme of ADL's centennial is imagine a world without hate. The goal is not imagine a world without anti-Semitism. That would not be enough. The ADL knows injustice anywhere is indeed a threat to justice everywhere. The ADL's goal is attainable. Progress is slow, but it is happening. Quite simply, there are people and organizations on the right side of history and on the wrong side of history. For a century of fighting for equality, challenging the status quo, and working every day in the effort of fair treatment for all people, the ADL has dispositively worked to stand on the right side of history. And when I look at the work they are doing in schools with teachers, children, law enforcement, and so many others, I am certain the best is yet to come in the next hundred years. So thank you so much. If I ask anything of you tonight other than what you've already been asked in your generous support of this, it is don't just imagine a world without hate. Do something about it. Thank you very much. It's now my pleasure. Thank you very much.